Hi, let's now move on to the third block of Module 1, Fundamentals of Electricity Markets. It deals with the various markets and their purpose. To understand why we need to discuss these various markets, we first need to wonder why electricity is such a special commodity. Do you know why? I'm sure you know a few points. First of all, there must always be a balance between power generation and consumption. Second, transportation and distribution are happening on a power network with specific physical rules. They have to be accounted for and accommodated. Storage, as of today, is mostly an economical and not accessible at grid scale level. You may have heard of recent development with residential storage, grid scale storage from Tesla, among others, but still, as of today, it's not really widely uh, deployed and widely accessible. A large part of the electric demand is of immersive nature. You may think of ourselves as small residential consumers when we plug something in a power socket. We don't ask ourselves, is this windy today? Am I going to get electricity? Is electricity expensive right now? Should I not uh, just defer my need for electricity? No, we plug something in the socket. We expect electricity to be there. You may think also of hospital as electricity consumer. If a surgeon needs electric energy to perform surgery, he's not going to ask himself, is the sun shining? Do I have access to electricity? Is this too expensive right now? No, you need to perform surgery. You need your electric energy. It has to be there. Finally, electricity as a good cannot be differentiated. As a final consumer, I don't really know where my electricity is coming from, both geographically and in terms of what asset has produced my electricity. You don't know if you get your electricity from the solar panel of your neighbor, from an offshore wind farm, from the local CHP plant, or if it's imported from a remote country. All in all, electricity is just ubiquitous for most of us. There are different types of markets to deal with electric energy. The first type of market here in the top left is the capacity market. It's there for the system operator to ensure security of supply and maybe also access to certain type of generation means in the future to support operation of the power system. You may think of having more flexibility, of having some type of strategic assets like supporting nuclear power, etc. The energy market is the central place for the optimal scheduling and settlement of energy exchanges, which we'll discuss quite a lot uh, through next module. Finally, the ancillary service market is the market for the system operator to procure and remunerate all these services that are there for secure, reliable and economic operation of the power system. Different type of services may be considered like reserve, black start capability, uh, reactive reserves and voltage control, which we will discuss in a further module in this course. The various type of electric energy markets that we will discuss in this course are also centrally the day head market, then the intraday market and the balancing market. The futures market that consider the long-term financial contracts up to six years, these markets will be left aside as we will focus more on the operational timescales, day ahead and shorter. In Scandinavia, the futures market would be operated by, by NASDAQ, uh, and you can visit their webpage if you want to know more. The day ahead market, which we also call spot, is seen today as the central instrument for everyday matching of electricity supply and demand. It's happening on a day ahead scale. We will discuss it again in a further module. The one that concerns us in Scandinavia would be the North Pool L spot. Then we have this intraday market, which is a continuous trading platform between the day ahead and its uh, clearing and the real time operation. It allows to correct the original schedules. It might be that you want uh, to change the operation of your portfolio. It might be that there are forecast errors, so you need to compensate for these forecast errors. So we have this mechanism for continuous matching in terms of supply and demand so that you can change your schedule from the clearing of the day ahead market. The market for us in Scandinavia, the intraday market, is the North Pool Elbas. Finally, we have the balancing market that is very close to real-time operation and that is there for the system operator to ensure that the power system balance is kept. In Denmark, it is an Aginet that operates this market. Placing it into perspective and having a timeline, here is a graph that represents 
all these markets and the sequence of operation of these various markets. You have two sides in this graph, which is something that you need to remember for the rest of the course. We have the side of the market operator that takes care of the day head and intraday markets. And then we have the side of the system operator that takes care of the end series service market and the balancing market. Eventually, we will go to real time for the instantaneous operation of the, of the power system. Looking at the bigger picture, we don't have a single electricity market that concerns all of us. Originally, there have been electricity markets that appeared in various regions of Europe. This is a long list of all the electricity markets that developed. And as I mentioned in a previous block, today the frontiers between these markets is a bit blurry as some markets have merged, some markets have moved to some other country. So this picture is evolving all the time. Also, for a few years now, the market and grid operators have agreed that we should couple all this electricity market to reach a European-wide electricity market to increase social welfare for all of us. The idea is to couple all the day ahead markets through a flow based mechanism, which we will discuss in a further module. We want to standardize the products for intraday markets and have new matching algorithm that makes it easier for everybody to match supply and demand. And we need a target model for balancing, which is a bit more difficult to attend since balancing is done by various types of system operators in different countries all over Europe. So they first need to agree on terminology, uh, best practice, etc., before we can then harmonize uh, these balancing markets. The overall objective of this uh, European-wide electricity market, first, we want to harmonize all these market structures that we have over Europe, and this should eventually allow to strengthen competition and make electricity cheaper for the consumers. It will improve liquidity and transparency, which has always been a goal when you have uh, markets that you deploy for a commodity. And eventually, this should lead to social welfare optimization. So it should improve, increase revenues for those on the supply side. And hopefully, it should also decrease the cost for those that are on the demand side, including us as small consumers. When looking at this big project of a European-wide uh, electricity market, we have to remember that we have an underlying uh, power network. This is a simplified representation of the European transmission network, here only with 1,500 lines, but the real uh, power system at transmission level has 30,000 lines. This is an extremely complicated system. On top of that, and that's the point of this course, we have deployed renewable energy generation means on this network. And here you can see a video with an animation of what would be the wind power potential over this whole network. And the colors of the links of the network uh, cables is changing depending on the flows that are induced by wind power generation, but also load, but also solar power generation all over Europe. I hope you got a good overview of these various markets and their purpose. I would propose you to use the self-assessment quiz to check your understanding. Thank you.